his medication was being changed and I, I said I've look I've got power of attorney in place if I need to make those and you know whether it was a stressful day for that particular nurse that I spoke to and no absolutely not he's, he's got capacity to make those decisions and in my head the man that I took into hospital didn't have capacity to understand there's lots of there's lots of medical questions that have gone unanswered for me I didn't speak to a doctor for four weeks in regards to his medical care it was always nurses and then in the end I, I demanded that I spoke to some I didn't want to do that I don't want to do things like demand but you know I, I'd had a specialist consultant for Parkinson's in a different hospital and said can you find something out and tell me because I'm not getting any significant information and and it was only it was a, a midnight phone call on a Friday which you well I was in bed and you can imagine an unknown number I thought oh my god what's happened because at that point there was no significant change in his his well-being um, and it was at that point that I got told that my father had signed a DNR form two weeks earlier without any and I know in the normal circumstances um, I'd have been allowed to sit with him and we'd be allowed to discuss it and and have those conversations you know dad is this really what I don't think that the man I know wanted to come home to his family he want he, he wanted to come home he, he couldn't wait to all he said was I can't wait to be in your house in my flat uh, with you and have breakfast with Toby my son you know wake up to him and he kept saying Toby are you going to come and wake dad dad up that's what, my, that's what he called him dad dad are you going to come and wake me up in the morning so we can have breakfast before you go to school? You know, and it was, I, that man, I don't think would have signed that form without talking to him. And I don't think he was given that opportunity. And I wasn't given that opportunity.